my name is Melissa and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be giving my thoughts and opinions on the one, two, three, four, five, six books that I read this month, which honestly, I kind of failed at my TBR, I'm not gonna lie. I filmed my very first TBR last month and I failed miserably. Um, I don't know whether it's because I felt pressured to read those books and I ended up not really wanting to pick them up. I'm not exactly sure. But let's go ahead and talk about the books that I did get to. The very first book that I read was The Silver Swan by Emma Jones. Emma Jones is one of my absolute favorite dark new adult romance authors and I wanted to reread this book because I believe the fourth book in the series came out and I've read the first two. So I wanted to go ahead and catch up again on this since I've already purchased it and thought, you know, why not? This novel is set in high school, which, you know, you kind of think, ooh, is it really for high schoolers? It is definitely not. So the main character, Madison, and her family move into this town because they're trying to escape the past because of something that happened. She then there catches the eye of Bishop, who is like the it guy, as there is in these high school stories, and that kind of may not be a really good thing. There's more to this town and the boys that she is surrounding herself with than meets the eye. It's kind of like this underworld with a lot of secrets and she doesn't really know what's going on and eventually at the very end there's this very explosive part of the book and you're like what the heck is going on and you want to pick up the next book immediately, which I most likely will so I can continue on with this series. The one and only physical book that I read this past month was Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. This is a book that I started in January and continued on to February. This was a bit of a slow read for me. It took me a while to really get into the book and get into the writing style. It wasn't that difficult to kind of comprehend. It wasn't like there was a lot of flowery speech or things like that or descriptions. It was kind of a slow paced book. You start off when the main character Valen is 10 years old until he becomes an adult. So you're kind of seeing this transition in his life and you get to see where he starts off getting into this school where he becomes a warrior and the trials he has to face, which I found very, very interesting. But it, there kind of is a lull in the book where I'm like, okay, let's pick it up. And at the last, I believe, like one third of the book is when it really packed a punch and it really kept going and I was enthralled by the rest of the book. I updated my reading while I was going through this book on my Goodreads account. I'll go ahead and link the link down below for you if you'd like to check those out and kind of see what my thoughts were. But ultimately, I really did enjoy this book. I think I might pick up the second one, but eventually later, maybe just not as this moment. I have a lot of other fantasy books to get to before I get to the second one of this. Kill Switch by Penelope Douglas was one of my absolute most anticipated books that was coming out. This is a new adult dark romance series that I really enjoy. It is the third book in this series and oh my gosh, it is about Damon and Winter and their relationship. So Damon in the first two books is like the bad guy. You don't like him, you hate him, and somehow like this book makes you fall in love with him. Like he is, oh my goodness. I really started to care for the character and Winter is so amazing. She's so strong and she's so capable when a lot of people don't think that she is. And I really loved that about her. The Winter is completely blind and she has been since an accident that actually included Damon. And she kind of blames Damon for this accident. She can't really remember exactly what happened, but she knows that her parents don't want her spending time with him or anything like that. Like the previous books in this series, this goes from the past and the present, and you kind of get an idea of these two characters and how their lives intertwine. What I love about the series is slowly as you're going through the past and you're seeing what happened, it unravels the story and you're able to get a better understanding of who these characters are, why they are the way they are, and what really happened that night on Devil's Night. So you definitely need to read the first book Corrupt in this series because I went into this one and I totally forgot what happened in the first two books and I was a bit lost. So it is not as standalone as I thought it was when going into this even though I thought it would be, you know, one in, you know, one, two, three in the series, but it was really, really good. I highly enjoyed it and I definitely want to do a reread of the first two books as well. The next book that I picked up was also another reread for me, and that was Sustained by Tajan. Tajan is another indie author that I absolutely 
fell in love with when I first started reading her books. And this is one of the ones that I didn't really remember what happened, so I wanted to pick it up and reread it. This is a standalone novel about Brianna and Luke, and it begins off with a SWAT raid on her now ex-boyfriend because he is a drug dealer. She didn't want to believe that he was a drug dealer. She put on blinders even though her brother and other people told her that this is what he did, and she just didn't want to believe them. So now she's kind of having to deal with all of this, and she goes back and joins the band that Luke and her brother and her cousin are in that she used to be in. This is a story about love, family, the consequences of your action, and guilt. This isn't one of my absolute favorite from this author, but I really did enjoy this book and highly suggest you check it out. Enchante by Gita Chalice was actually an audible book that I read this month. I listened to it to and from work. It was definitely one of the better audiobooks that I have listened to and I was very surprised by this book. I haven't heard a lot of people reading it or anything about it, but I really did enjoy it. It was very easy to follow along and the story, it became very engrossing the way the narrator told the story and I highly suggest you listen to the audiobook if you are going to check this book out. The setting is right before for the French Revolution and there is a magical element. The main character Camille has magic and she has to take care of her little sister and really her big brother and so she uses magic to turn inanimate objects into what looks like money for a short period of time. So doing this is not going to last long term so she decides to go to Versailles and gamble and win lots of money using her magic. At Versailles she meets a group of friends that she really begins to love and adore. This is a wonderful story about love and sacrifice and what one is willing to do to help their family. There will be another book I believe that will be following these same characters during the French Revolution. I might pick it up. I really did enjoy the audiobook so if I do decide to pick that book up it would definitely be in the same medium. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching my February wrap up. This was definitely a month of rereads for me. It definitely was not expected to be but I really do think that the whole TBR and setting a group of books mandatory for me is not the way to go. I'm definitely more of a mood reader. So if you have read any of these books, please leave your thoughts and opinions on them down below. I love to kind of hear what other people's opinions are. And I hope you have a great day and happy reading. Bye!